everything okay now let's talk about the project this is all the the lamp the plant over and I also added a little lamp here also made with the same style so we have a wooden lamp with a copper plate here on the top and basically this helps the plant to grow but consider that I will bring everything at home and place it in front of a window so the plant will receive a lot of light for sure so now let's connect the compressor that uh, will push the air inside the stone. This is a very special stone. It's made for uh, water fish tanks. And this can dissipate the air between very, very small holes. That's the reason why we have so much air flowing on the top. So now we can connect the light. I placed two different lights, as you saw. I start, we start with the first light, that is a, like a yellow, very warm light. This is uh, for maybe creating an ambient light, very diffuse light, not, not very strong, and I, I think it looks amazing. But the most interesting thing, let's turn it off, is connecting the UV LED. You can see that now we have a much modern lamp, and the, the fertilizer I place inside the water reacts a little bit with the UV light. You can clearly see that there are like green shadows that are fluorescent here on the top and on the bottom, and it's so cool to watch it working. Now I just have to wish that the UV light doesn't destroy the roots of the plant or maybe destroy the food for the plant. I know for sure that UV light can destroy bacteria or can sterilize things, so 
I'm not really sure if it's, a, if it's a good thing for the plant, but in any case, I can just turn it off or just turn it on for a couple, short, very short period of time. So overall, I think that the project looks amazing. I was wishing to have a much more fluorescent effect here inside water, like the other time that we, we built together the, um, the incubator for the fetus of an alien. <laughs> this was a project just taking a transparent co container, placing inside the fetus that I just made, and then add fluid and also connect a UV light. And this is the effect. We have a very, very bright uh, liquid fluid that is like fluorescent and reminds like a scientific experiment. So this was the purpose of this project, having like something that looks like uh, something that is like a science experiment. Of sure, you can buy this kind of lamps. There's a link here below, you can find it and just order them on Amazon. So I was watching the project and I thought, well, there's something wrong with it. It's because if I have a plant in my house inside a vase with soil inside and I just give some water to the plant, it will die. It will draw and just kill the plant immediately. So how does this work? How is it possible that this plant can grow up for other 10 or 20 years without dying? And instead, if a plant in my house will die if I put too much water. The, the answer is very simple. Let's start, first of all, to understand that the roots for a plant aren't only there for catching like nutrients or uh, salt inside the, the soil, but it's also very important to catch oxygen. Like us, a plant needs energy to grow and to make all the chemical reaction and things a plant does. And in, it takes the oxygen from the soil in this way. We, we don't really think about it, but the soil has a lot of holes, cavity where, soil can, where, where air can go inside and oxygen, of course, and the roots can catch the oxygen in this way. It's also very important to have a soil with a lot of air gaps inside. That's the reason why we have uh, tractors that move the soil or like there are um, people that buy worms put them inside the soil just to make more uh, holes inside the soil and to help the roots catching more oxygen. Now, there is something that is very, very strange to understand. It's not logical, it's counterintuitive, and is the fact that if a plant really needs oxygen to grow, and almost risk the life is if the conditions aren't correct, if like there is too much rain, the plant can die. Why it doesn't really bring the roots outside the soil and catch the, the oxygen from the outside world? And the answer is simple. Maybe there's the risk that the roots can dry. Maybe there's too much sun during the day and it will kill the roots and this doesn't work. So the roots has to stay underground to catch oxygen. And the most counterintuitive thing is photosynthesis. Uh, because if you think about it, we just said that the plant needs oxygen to grow. It's something so important for her. And why the leaves, when it produces photosynthesis and reacts with the light, produce like a waste material, oxygen that just throws away. If I don't really need oxygen, just throw it away. And instead, it really needs a lot of oxygen catching from the soil. The answer is very simple. We, the plant needs a lot of oxygen, much more oxygen that what the leaves can produce. So isn't enough for the plants to grow. And consider as well that the photosynthesis happens only during the daylight and maybe not also all the days. There are days where it's like there's bad weather and we don't have enough photosynthesis to create oxygen for the plant. Instead, the, the roots can catch oxygen from underground 24 seven without problems. So this is the best solution. Now let's talk about the project I just made and understand why we have so many bubbles inside the container. I was telling you that these bubbles aren't really necessary. For example, I can just shut down the compressor and the plant can still live for a couple hours without problems. The, let me explain you what happens. So we place here a stone that is, per, the purpose of this stone was for fish tanks. Basically they work the same, fish and plants in this case works the same. Let me tell you the reason. So the little stone, the stone have so many little holes, it has a lot of por porosity and this will create very, very tiny and small bubbles that goes on the top. But this is important. The important thing is that the bubbles are very small and in this case can dissolve oxygen 
contained inside the bubble itself inside the water. This is something probably you will see every day with sparkling water. How do you make sparkling water? They just can take a very strong container, they fill it with compressed gas, in this case carbon dioxide, uh, dioxide and they add tap water. So the tap water and the very high pressure of the gas mix together and it dissolves the gas inside the water. So basically we can do the same thing in this case. We take, we hook a compressor and we are producing bubbles that dissolve oxygen inside the container. So um, for example, we can also make something that is much more ex expensive. We can make uh, sparkling water, but instead of using carbon dioxide compressed, we can take compressed oxygen and tap water, mix it together. Uh, we can still have like still water. We don't really see bubbles or anything, but the plant can catch the oxygen that is dissolved in the water. So if you think about this, something that happens also in the fish tank, you, this is a stone that I took from a fish tank, but you never really saw a fish swimming on top of a stone where there are all the bubbles. Open the, how you call it? The, the, the things they use to breathe underwater and let all the bubbles go inside and the fish is very happy because it's breathing better. No, the fish doesn't really need bubbles, it just needs oxygen that is dissolved inside the water thanks to the bubble. So this is basically the same thing for the roots. They don't really need bubbles, they need oxygen that is dissolved inside the water. So I can take a much bigger container, make the, the bubbles on, on the left and place the, the plant on the right and if the container is the same, the water is the same, the oxygen is dissolved in the whole container and the plant is happy as well. So that's the reason why a hydroponic system works. It's very simple, how I explain it to you. So I really hope that you enjoy the project, also how, how, how it came out with copper on the base, wood, we also have wood and copper here on the top, copper here on the top as well and brass, and I think it looks amazing. I love it. I really love it. I enjoy so much making it. And I hope you enjoy these kind of videos. Let me know here in the comments below if you enjoy the music, if you want to have, if you want to give me any suggestion how, on how I can maybe change the style of this video, or if you want to have more explanation of what I'm doing during the process, if you want to have a voiceover, I'm just experimenting with you this new style of video. So let me know here in the comments below. And at this point, I leave you my two previous videos here. Check it out and see you next week in another do-it-yourself tutorial. Ciao, ciao.